This lesson covers adding roles and features using Server Manager. In this example, I have Server Manager open, and to view the current roles, I can go to my local server, and if I scroll all the way down, I can see my roles and features. Remember that a role is the primary purpose of a machine. A machine is a domain controller, a machine is an IIS server, a machine is a file server, and then a feature helps a machine do its job, such as BitLocker encryption, clustering. On the dashboard, you'll actually notice as part of the original steps, it has a link to add roles and features. I also access this through the manage, add roles and features option. Notice there is also a remove roles and features option. If I select the add roles and features, it gives me some basic information. Typically, you're going to do a role based or feature based installation. This lets me pick the roles and or features I want to install. There may be some configuration as part of that initial installation through the server manager wizard, but it's also a remote desktop services installation. This is a scenario driven install that through a single wizard will actually deploy a complete remote desktop services infrastructure. This can be across multiple boxes. It could set up a VDI farm. It could set up a session host farm. It can deploy gateways, licensing servers, the entire set of configuration. So it's very much a special case for the deployment. But for now, we'll focus on the role-based or feature-based installation. I click next. If I have more than one server added, I can select which server. Now, what I cannot do is select multiple servers. So I cannot deploy roles to multiple machines through one execution of the wizard. If I have that requirement, my guidance would be to use PowerShell. So I select a server. I can also manipulate virtual hard disks. I would select the path of the VHD file, and it would allow me to then add roles and features. So I'll select a server. At this point, I pick the roles that I wish to install. Some of them expand out to give me additional options for the installs. If I check it at a high level, it will typically add all of the core options. So I could add a role, depending on which one I select. It may add additional pages to the wizard. It also will detect, if I want to install this, there are some other dependencies. In this case, it's advising me to install the management tool. I don't have to do that. I could uncheck this and it would not install it. You'll notice now it's added some pages to the dialog. If I continue through, now I could add features, things like BitLocker, failover clustering. Now for Windows Deployment Services, which part of WDS do I want to install? Do I want to install a deployment server? Do I want to install a transport server or both? I'll click Next. If a restart is required, I can check this box, restart the destination server automatically. That means it won't prompt me at the end and Server Manager won't show a flag saying a reboot is required. It will just automatically reboot. Now, in a production environment, you should be careful of this option as it may reboot at a time you really don't want it to. I can also export out the configuration settings. And what this is actually going to do is give me all of the config that I just selected through the wizard out to something I could then execute using PowerShell. So maybe I'm using the wizard to actually work out what I want to do, but I don't actually want to run it right now. Instead, I could export out the configuration. So I go to my documents, deployment config template, hit save, and it would then have that file available to me. Here in Explore, I can now see I have a deployment config template. If I open that up, this is the XML that would go through those various configurations. And I could then utilize that as part of my install Windows feature using PowerShell. I can also specify an alternate source path. In most cases, when I install Windows, the source files for all of the different components are already on the file system. They're stored in the WinSXS folder, the side-by-side -side assembly. So there is no source required. If, however, I actually uninstalled features from the disk, or if I was going to install the feature of an old version of .NET, .NET 3.5 does not get written to the disk. In that case, it would actually require the source location. So in this case, I could say specify an alternate source path, 
and I would give it the location of a side-by-side -side assembly where those files can be found. It's giving me that example exactly as I said. Hey, if I want 3.5, that's not put on the file system. I would have to give it a location. That could be another machine side-by-side -side assembly. It could be an expanded file share. It could even be a WIM file. So I'd have to give it that location. At this point, I would just click install and that would go through. Likewise, I can remove features. If I do remove roles and features, it's exactly the same process. I select a server. It will show me services that are installed. I would just unselect it, confirm, and then they will be removed from the box.